Hello, good morning. This is Josh reporting live from the ShopRite in Pearl River because of compromises being made. Uh, I have seen a movie um, and I would like to talk to you about it. This is a movie called Slingshot. And this is um, directed by Mikhail Hofstrom, I believe is the director's name. And this is a science fiction movie, an R-rated science fiction drama for grown-ups that kind of teases some action-y, sci-fi-ish things in the, the trailer. But in reality, you know pretty quickly this is like, you know, this is not a um, Oblivion or an Independence Day. This is more of a Solaris or an, an Interstellar or something like that. This is a drama that uses space travel as like... Um, I guess Sunshine is, is a great one that I can think of, one of my favorites. Uh, does this reach the heights of Sunshine? Stay tuned. No. Um, so yeah, this movie was intriguing from the trailer. Um, and you don't, it's one of those things where you could say you don't get movies like this anymore. And yet you say that as you're getting this movie. So I don't, you know, I, we gotta stop with that rhetoric of like being so like tunnel vision that like everything is the first time it's ever happened um, or they don't do this anymore or whatever. So this is, I guess I haven't seen a movie like this in a multiplex in a while though. Um, but it kind of, it, it fits that trend this year of like theatrically released genre movies, things that have been recently straight to streaming that are getting their time in, in the cineplex. So I'm happy for that. This is a movie um, with a kind of familiar setup. Uh, Casey Affleck, Lawrence Fishburne, and Frenchie from The Boys uh, are astronauts. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. It's Homer something, right? Is it Homer Capone or something? Tomer, Tomer Capone, I believe is his name. Uh, sorry, um, bad with names. Good good with trivia, but as I get older, we're much, much worse with the actual syllables. Um, so, uh, they're astronauts who are on this mission to Titan, one of the moons of Saturn, I believe it is, to find resources to bring back to the dying Earth. They're really, but they are, and we've seen this set up in movies before, where they are really just the first to go. They're the pioneers. They're not necessarily expected to come home. So they are just going to make this journey, and then the data and their experiences will go back. Like, there's a plan to go home. That's the slingshot. But there's this kind of uh, somber overtone that like this is a real these guys are really the first to try something big that may or may not go well <clears throat> um, and the movie is not so much about their mission though as it is about the psychology of the characters and um, what's you know mental state so they have to constantly go into hyper hi, hyper sleep or, or uh, it's been a minute so I don't remember the terminology they use in this movie but they have to go into some kind of cryo sleep every nine months or so and then come out and do part of the mission and then go back in because they can't use their resources too much. Uh, but whenever they do, the drugs that they are given that put them to sleep and bring them back jar their uh, mental capacities and they find they're, they kind of have deteriorating mental states and that's the setup for the drama. And it really could be like, you know, it's got a few cutaways to things. It, it, it's got flashbacks to, to Earth. It's got a few like flights of fancy or, or thing. Are this is this horrifying thing really happening or not, or is this person really there or not? But for the most part, it is like a uh, drawing room drama with like three dudes in one enclosed space. And I like the setup. I like the vibe. I like these actors. Um, side note: just seeing uh, Frenchie from The Boys just reminds me of like. This is a thing that was really happening like uh, a decade ago or even five or, or eight years ago where ev all the supporting players in movies were like prestige TV people. It started with like Mad Men and Stranger Things and Game of Thrones and Orange is the New Black. Like you would just see the cast of those shows in everything. And I just, I realized seeing Frenchie from The Boys in this movie, I was like, oh yeah, it reminded me that you don't see that as much. Some of those people have become big movie stars now, but, um, that weird kind of pipeline of like appearing on a prestige streamer and then just being the supporting character in every movie, whatever. Uh, I don't, I have no point of view on that. I just, it's an observation. So I like this cast. I like the setup, although it's a little familiar. And then as the movie began to devolve into like uh, psychological, 
ambiguity, nebulousness, I was like, oh, they're not gonna do this, are they? There were a few things that I laid out in my brain, like, they're not gonna do this, are they? They're not gonna do this, and they're not, certainly not gonna do this. Well, they did two of them. They did two of the things that I was like, oh, they're not gonna do this, huh? And I'm not gonna spoil anything, but, you know, this is a movie about um, fluctuating mental states and, and that kind of stuff. So you know that it's gonna have reveals and twists and things like that, and it does a bunch of them. And I'm like, okay. I guess my biggest complaint at the end of the day is apart from things just being a little too familiar and this not feeling like a bold enough statement that it needs to exist, is that there's also like a central, it keeps cutting to out of context moments of this relationship back on earth with uh, a woman between Casey Affleck and I'm sorry, I do not remember the actor's name. Um, and it's a relationship that's fraught and intense. And then you get a little more information about it as you go, but then the rug gets pulled out and do you, is what you really thought you knew true. M my complaint about that is, and that's another trope that's so overdone. It's kind of, that's very interstellar. It's very, um, what's the one at Astra has elements of that, but um, even Arrival, which is not a space travel movie, but it does that science fiction movie that has like those out of place memories that get kind of piled up throughout the movie and then recontextualized at the end. And this does that thing. It's just been done better elsewhere. And I didn't, I wasn't compelled by that relationship, which I feel like I was supposed to be. I feel like that's supposed to propel this entire movie. And to me, it kind of fell flat. Uh, Casey Affleck is a good, sympathetic protagonist although he can't shake that kind of like Boston tough you know you feel like he's gonna at any moment stop the film and just turn and, and beat you up but that maybe is my own personal issue Lawrence Fishburne is amazing he's so committed like he's very important to whatever success this movie does have because of his command of the screen and his kind of effortless uh, you know gravitas and all that so this movie I it's not a disaster it just didn't pop for me um, worth checking out. I'd say stream it when it becomes available to stream if it looks interesting to you. It's, uh, it's I don't know, it's a swing and a miss to me. Um, but that's it. I'll be back with more reviews very soon. I will be dressed like this because I have a few of them to knock out right now. But uh, thank you so much for watching and for your support. I will see you again very soon. And uh, bye.